Venkat Shashin will be on the board of corporate media in our country. This class is going to be taken by uh, Sri M.K. Vedu, this well-known uh, uh, journalist in, uh, in the field of journalism for the past 30 years. Uh, previously, he has worked in uh, worked with uh, the Hindu, with the Star Times and Finance Express, and he uh, served in uh, Raisha Bhatt TV also for one period. And uh, later on, uh, uh, he is the founder editor of uh, Wire in, uh, you will be knowing all this, uh, Wire in uh, Wire in uh, So, we are pleased with having him here. And uh, I request uh, President Comrade Ali to present our uh, session. So, Comrades, straight away we are going to this session. As already introduced by Comrade Hanrao, Mr. Was associated to Hindu, Hindustan Times, and many other. And he is also the founder of this wire. He has also, I think, has written a book on Rafael. Rafael, that uh, Rafael Meal and everything. That he also wrote. He covered Rafael. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rafael. What I want to say is, uh, he is a great friend of our, great friend, he is in what? Inverted comma. For, for all our body and all this VG. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, special attention to yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, The topic all of you know, that's the role of corporate media in our country. I request comment uh, Sri Vemke Vendu to kindly address us to that. Thank you uh, for inviting me here to speak to the bank employees. Uh, Federation, uh, <laughs> I will, uh, I mean, before I start, I, I must say that I used to work in the business standard many years ago, 1990, and I I covered the banks very closely. I For three, four years, I, I followed the Hushar Mehta scam, and uh, uh, during the, that period, I, I, uh, <coughs> I was very closely and I investigated and studied the role of banks. Uh, <coughs> as you all know, it started with a state bank. Uh, the whole scam began with a state bank of India employee who uh, who had a special relationship with Rashid Mehta. And those days he was uh, he colluded with him uh, uh, in in creating. Uh, a market uh, for uh, which, which market is not entirely legal uh, for securities, so that's how the scam broke. <coughs> so, uh, so I, I have I've had a very close uh, and I've covered banking generally for many years. I, I must have covered banking for at least uh, six seven years for for business standing and later for economic time. Also. I was a bureau chief of economic times. And, uh, and uh, it was a, it's been a very useful experience for me to study banking and understand how Indian banks work. You know. And uh, of course, a lot has changed. Uh, like in the media, uh, like in the bank, the banking industry, the media also a lot has changed. Uh, uh, private banks have come up in the last 20, 30 years. Uh, in media also. A lot of uh, private interests, corporate interests have have come uh, and captured, I would say, uh, media in a big way. I'll talk about how the whole thing has has evolved uh, because I because I had a uh, I had a ringside view uh, for 40 years. I came into the media in 1983, uh, and uh, in '86 I used to work for a uh, newspaper 87, I think. Yeah. A newspaper called Patriot, if you people might recall. It was a very pro labor uh, newspaper. And uh, in Patriot, we had, uh, you know, we had instructions from our editor that whenever there is a dispute between between a labor union and the, the management of the company, uh, you have to give the version of the labor union first, and then you should talk about the, the 
company's uh, version. So, so, I mean, that was 35 years ago. <coughs> now I see that the whole thing got reversed. The, there is only the corporate company's version which goes. In any case, trade union movements have, have, uh, have weakened considerably. Now, that's part of a bigger meta trend, you know, globalization, <coughs> you know, privatization, uh, liberalization. So there is a, uh, uh, I mean, this, this, this ideology, of course, came from abroad, came from the West. It, it was imposed on many developing countries. So, <coughs> so not just India, many other countries, emerging uh, economies uh, uh, like India, who uh, uh, which which had very strong public sector uh, foundations, have also, you know, gone that path. Uh, you know, the that ideological path of uh, of. Privatization and liberalization. <coughs> what is called Washington Consensus. In the 90s, it was called Washington Consensus. It came from World Bank. And, you know, of course, the, the World Bank itself, after, after some years, World Bank itself realized its mistake and Washington Consensus got discredited. So, so in 20 years, after it, was, it all began in the 90s, but Suddenly, in, in, in 2012, 2013, some years ago, World Bank and IMF both both concluded that the policy of of Washington consensus imposing liberalization, privatization, forced globalization <coughs> had not worked, and uh, so we the clock has now you know turned the other way. Now we have, we have a situation where. Uh, Globally, uh, different <coughs> policy solutions are being, being being suggested, but but the damage has been done. You know, you, you can't now go back to the, the strong uh, you know uh, public sector base that, uh, that these countries have, including India. I'm just giving broad giving a broad uh, a, a broad frame background. <coughs> Within which I'd like to discuss media. So, so media, media also, uh, you know, in a society when bigger changes happen, uh, media also gets uh, caught in those changes. So, media, media cannot uh, uh, be isolated from some of these big changes uh, that that happened that, that have happened in the last few years. So, as I said, when I joined the profession, there was still. Uh, there was still a lot of uh, consensus around uh, around you know uh, social uh, uh, responsibility you know uh, uh, around a socialist uh, uh, kind of pattern uh, of uh, uh, which which was seen uh, in, in policy making in, in, in uh, uh, till the 80s 90s uh, before the 1991 reform even after 91 reforms <coughs> things were not uh, Things that started changing, but uh, it did not change so dramatically. Uh, because very soon it was realized, even during Narsimha Rao's time, it, it, first two three years they tried to do a lot of drastic reforms. Then there was a pushback which came. So, so then things uh, got a little stalled. Um, then again, successive governments. Since since governments got committed to that path, uh, as I said in the beginning of the Washington Consensus. Uh, Successive governments also went down that path, uh, but there were a lot of uh, in between. There were a lot of pushback, a lot of resistance, correction, resistance from unions, people like you, etc. Uh, so, so in in, in this in this broader uh, uh, against this broader background, uh, media also changed. Media, you know, traditionally media was uh, media had a background. Uh, uh, which was very, very different from what uh, things are today. Uh, most, much of media was born, born and evolved uh, against the backdrop of uh, India's, you know, freedom movement. Uh, India coming out of uh, its colonial experience. You know, so, and and 
building of a nation, you know, the, the Nehruvian period. So, a lot of media was very committed to uh, that uh, broad ideological uh, frame uh, in the 50s, 60s, uh, <coughs> until even until the 70s. Uh, that's where bank nationalization happened, right? So, bank nationalization was a big decision. So, so it, it continued uh, till 70s. Indira Gandhi did bank nationalization. Uh, that was a big thing. <coughs> but even today, uh, it is regarded by Congress as one of its biggest achievements, nationalization of banks. And you all know it was preceded by, uh, by multiple scams in the banks and insurance sector, under the private sector. So, <coughs> so media also, uh, if, you take, if you pick up all the big newspapers, you know, that uh, uh, the Hindu from the South or, you know, or Times of India, really were, Hindustan Times, Birla's, who worked with Mahatma Gandhi at that time, so, uh, and there were other papers, which frequent journals, Bombay. Uh, so, so, there were newspapers, uh, they, they weren't television, television came much later in the 90s. But uh, broadly, the, the thought process was uh, uh, that media was seen as an instrument of change. Uh, Today, media is seen as an instrument of profit. So, you know, they, somewhere along the line, media became a uh, lot of owners of media. I worked with the Times Group for many years, 13, 14 years. So, uh, I, I saw how generational change happened. Like what Times of India was under Ashok Jain, patriarch, and then how Times of India changed under the, the next generation uh, of owners. So, so so media also became uh, uh, kind of got caught uh, in this uh, in this whole uh, uh, in this whole uh, new system where uh, profitability uh, became uh, a, a primary uh, kind of uh, uh, a primary motive, uh, a primary objective. So. If you remember media earlier on, uh, in the 70s until 80s, uh, all newspapers had the same cover price. You, you could get the, all the newspapers priced at 2 rupees or whatever, 1 and a half rupees, 1 rupees. Then came the, the period of big competition, big, you know, uh, you know profiteer, uh, running after profits, that, that phase, media companies getting listed on the stock market. This is very important. Media was never meant to be listed on the stock market. And, you know, media is not something which can be driven by the stock price. So all this has happened only in the last 20 years. So, so, so until 80s and even early 90s, media was not listed. Media companies were not listed on the stock market. But the moment profitability became the motive, and the moment the space. Uh, New, the newsprint space became available for uh, for advertising in a much bigger way. So advertising became became more uh, I mean, became a more uh, what, should, what should I say? Uh, became a bigger priority than 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 giving objective news and analysis. So I mean, I have no hesitation in here in saying that that I, that. I, the newspaper that I worked for, there was one newspaper owner who uh, who said at one time uh, that uh, when things changed, <coughs> that news is not what I what I fill in between advertising, uh, in between advertisements. So so uh, so the, look, look at the flip. Uh, earlier, advertisement was a filler in the midst of a lot of news. Advertisement was would be placed here and there. Then it came to a point where news started becoming a filler. You know, so you will find a lot of ads, big ads. You know, uh, I in the, until the 90s I never saw a, a front page of a newspaper, just one big ad, and then you open and you see the actual front page. So these days you have a front page which is an ad. Then you have a second page which is also an ad. <laughs> And third page, you see the front page. You know. So these are all changes. I mean, I'm just telling you the, how 
I have seen things change in the last uh, 40 years. So this is, this is the, the overwinning uh, influence of, you know, commerce, you know, on, on media. Before that, media was, was, as I said, seen as an instrument of social change, uh, truly. And uh, journalists also worked, uh, who came into the profession, worked uh, on the basis of certain you know, ideals and principles. Uh, all that has changed. Uh, all that has changed in a big way. And uh, television, of course, changed uh, a lot of things in a different way. And now the internet. Uh, now the internet has completely, uh, uh, the political economy of media has been transformed by the internet. Now, what I, I was earlier talking about was in the traditional <coughs> business, the newspaper <coughs> business and how, how newspaper business itself started changing in the, in the late 90s, 2000s, uh, as, as I said, um, with, the, with profit becoming uh, a primary motive. And, um, uh, all the media companies getting listed on the stock exchange. Uh, so what happens on the stock exchange is you have to, uh, the moment you list your company on the stock exchange, then you start following the stock market. Uh, you know, every quarter you have to report pro your balance sheet profits. So, so as somebody said, quarter say quarter tak. You are constantly, you know, <laughs> looking at <laughs> the development of your, <laughs> you know, uh, of your product on the basis of what the stock market is dictating. So. That is, of course, one. That's a broader aspect. Uh, and then, then came. Uh, uh, then you had a big uh, television rev uh, revolution. Uh, uh, television had had a big impact on uh, you all. Would have experienced be part of that you know, television revolution. Uh, it began with a few channels, four five channels. Today you have some thousand channels, uh, and after that came the internet. So uh, now we have multimedia. So you have uh, earlier we had newspaper text, then we had standalone newspaper, standalone text, uh, base format, standalone visual format television. Now you have internet which combines text and visual, both. So, so we, which we call multimedia. The, see the wire that we launched 10 years ago is a, is a multimedia <coughs> organization. So we we offer text, we offer news, we offer uh, on politics, whatever, on policies, on, on, <coughs> on society, science. And then we have, uh, we have videos also. You must have seen Karan Thapar's interview no? on, uh, on The Wire. So, and, uh, uh, so we have text, you have, you have uh, videos. Uh, so you are essentially you're combining uh, a newspaper with a television. So, uh, and, and, and things have, uh, the relationship with the reader has also changed. Like earlier, you, in the old newspaper era, you, you write a story and you'll have the, uh, you know, the, a reader write a letter which will get published, you know, <laughs> three days later. And then you will reply, today you, I write a story, publish it, within two minutes I'll get replies on Twitter. So, I'll, so uh, the speed. The speed of engagement has has changed, has changed in a big way. So, so that and it's, it's even people like me, people like me, my partner Siddharth Madhra, we 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 are all old newspaper people. We, we had a tough time coping with this this new speed of uh, you know how the speed at which the news travels. So uh, it sometimes you know it can affect you mentally. Sometimes you don't get sleep when at night <laughs> some response. You know, uh, twi some Twitter responses or some Facebook responses come, and then you have to wake up and see what's uh, early morning, six o'clock. The first thing you see is what are the responses. You know? like, uh, earlier we didn't do that. If you're in the newspaper, age of newspaper, we didn't do that. We could wait uh, for the next day. So we, we don't have the luxury of that uh, this thing anymore. So, <coughs> so we, we are in a in a in a kind of uh, in a big flux. Uh, Along with the flux, the media economics has changed. Now, something very profoundly has has changed in the last, uh, particularly the last ten years. <coughs> I'll tell you what. The uh, a lot of media, uh, media economics, uh, media has 
the media is becoming more and more unviable. Unviable in the sense, uh, the it is becoming difficult to sustain, uh, uh, you know, the, the costs uh, of running a media company, the cost of newspaper, uh, cost of, uh, of 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 news gathering, cost of uh, you know having so many people doing reporting, this you know sub editing, and and uh, cost of marketing, etc. Now the the, the the reason for that is a uh, very interesting reason. Uh, even, even big brands like Times of India, uh, Hindustan Times, Hindu, uh, uh, you can take Malala Manorama in Kerala, or so the big, big uh, you know, the, the market leaders, uh, traditional market leaders, they are also feeling the heat. So I'll give you one example. Times of India Group, which was a, was a unchallenged uh, uh, leader uh, in the media space in terms of circulation, in terms of profitability, has seen its profits dipping consistently. It started after the 2008 uh, uh, global financial crisis uh, because there was a for three, four years, the global financial crisis you know, created a lot of disruption. So a lot of uh, uh, companies uh, which advertise, the main source of for all these media, traditional media, means source of uh, <coughs> revenue is advertising, right? Uh, because the cover price is, as I said, it's very nominal. You know, they, what happened was they, most newspapers dropped the cover price and depended only on uh, advertising. Uh, so by doing that, they also became slave to the co world of uh, the corporate world. You know? So that was the that was the first compromise that happened, uh, and. And that policy, this policy of dropping cover price to zero and depending solely on advertising was also started by Times of India Group. So Times of India Group has been a leader in all trends in the media. So that's why, that's why I'm taking the example of Times of India. Because what, what Times of India is going through is something that all others are also going through because Times of India has always been the, the, the leader in, in new trends, uh, in media trends. So. <coughs> Times of India has been losing money uh, in the last, uh, before COVID, 2019-20, it had a loss of 400 crores. Never, one has never heard of Times of India group losing money. In fact, before that, in the, in the 90s, Times of India had a, had a profit to turnover ratio of 35%, which means if you had a turnover of 3,000 uh, crores, at that time it used to be about 3,000, uh, its profits were uh, about thousand plus crores. So, you know, one third of its uh, of its revenues were actually profits, clean profits. So, other media companies also made good profits. Hindu also made decent profits. <coughs> Hindu as in, was a market leader in, the, <coughs> in Tamil Nadu. And, uh, and you can go and check balance sheets. Uh, so, so what happened in the last, say, 10 years? Suddenly came two, three big uh, Global giants, uh, because things are now uh, global giants like social media giants like Google, Facebook, uh, you know, uh, YouTube, uh, Twitter, etc. They this started getting all the ads, classified ads, whether material, job ads, whatever you know, uh, which used to go to these traditional media. Uh, Times of India and Hindus and others, they have completely been, been cannibalized or taken over by, by Google, uh, uh, Facebook, etc. So much that today, you know, this, would, this would surprise you, of all the incremental revenues that the Indian media as a whole uh, generates, about 75% of all the incremental advertising revenue that, that comes to the media industry, but 75% goes to Google, Facebook, and the big social media giants. Now, it's a, it's very difficult to believe this because the, the total pie is about, uh, must be today upward of 50,000 crore, must be the total advertising uh, you know, uh, market, the advertising uh, uh, the annual advertising, you know, 
the pie, the the, uh, the the industry, the advertising uh, uh, market, of which 75 percent taken away by by Google, uh, Facebook, and others, because that's the nature of the change, transformation has, that has happened. All your children, they 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 actually go to Facebook and YouTube, and I, I don't think I I not see any of my nieces and nephews reading newspapers. In fact, my my a lot of my younger uh, you know people in their forties they don't read newspapers, they don't buy newspapers. You know? uh, so so everything is on mobile. People see you know so therefore you see ads when you read a story on the mobile you'll see a lot of ads popping up, right? So so the, all these ads used to earlier go to traditionally to the the, 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 the legacy media what we call it. You know? So so. So this is the big change that happened. So, so I, so this has actually affected the the traditional national media, uh, big newspapers uh, who are also on internet, like Hindu as Hindu dot com, Times India as Times India dot com, right? Hindustan Times. And they they are losing out to uh, these big social media global giants. So in some ways. The media economics is now controlled by uh, the, the Facebooks and the YouTubes and the WhatsApps because they they are the new uh, you know media giants in, in that sense, and this is causing a lot of problem to the to the to the to the legacy, legacy media. In fact, this is happening in other countries also. So in Australia and Germany, some time ago, the local media the owners they went to the government. And they said, all our revenue, 75% of the revenue have been taken by Facebook and others. We please bring a law forcing them to share, they are using our content. Because Facebook and others are just platforms. What they do is they, they, take, they, they take content from say, Times of India, Hindu, Times, Hindu, wherever, you know. Uh, and, and they just put it on there, uh, this, uh, uh, and people share it there. And, uh, and they get advertising, uh, because they have Facebook as, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, some uh, globally 600 billion viewers, <laughs> 600 billion views. In India, Facebook has 400 million, 500 million viewers. And no, no single newspaper group can have that kind of uh, uh, readership or viewership, right? So, so this is how the, the, whole, the whole game has changed. So, <coughs> so I'm talking about the political, new political economy of media. So, so, so Facebook, uh, uh, Twitter, YouTube, WhatsApp, they they are the new kings of the media space, if you ask me. And they are also useful to, to very small online uh, media people like us. See, there are, uh, you must have seen, there are some multiples, you know, hundreds, probably thousands of small YouTube channels, <coughs> small, you know, owners of websites. Uh, like wire is a, I would regard wire as a medium size. You know? We are not, we are not big. We are small. We have maybe eight, ten million page views on our, on our, uh, on, the, on the tech side. We have some, on our YouTube side, we have some, you know, fifteen million views a month. <coughs> so, so we, for us, for us also, the for YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. They, they have become our distribution, uh, you know, uh, channels, uh, and they are, they are the ones who take us to our viewers uh, and our readers. So, so, and so is the case. Even for now, Times of India and others, they also depend on the same big uh, social platforms as as the distribution uh, channels, uh, because physical distribution, like used to happen traditionally, throwing newspaper people's homes, that is now outdated. Although they still throw newspapers in, at homes and at, in, in, you know, as they keep it in airports when you travel, you see. But but the real the game is uh, happening through the uh, through the social media. <coughs> so small online guys uh, like us. Uh, so I, I I have this categorization that I've made. It's a, it's a slightly crude categorization, but 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 it's a uh, it, it it explains the new political economy of media, <coughs> which is. The, the social media giants are like global landlords, you know, and they are controlling media everywhere, right? 
and uh, not just India, other countries also. The national media owners, traditionally who are very strong, uh, like the Times Group, Hindu Sun Times Group, Hindu, Manorma, all these people, they are like national landlords. Now, depending on the <laughs> global <laughs> landlord, you know, who's taking away the revenues. And all small online guys like us, we are like, like you know, tenancy farmers, you know. <laughs> because we are on the internet, we are getting free space, and we are just, we don't have assets, uh, we don't have big capital, so we just have content. So we, we try to get as many, you know, readers, viewers, based on our content. So content has become very important. So what do you do? <coughs> So content today, content is king. You know, they say, <coughs> they, they, earlier they, they used to say that advertising was uh, was the source of survival. Now, it is content. We have come back to content as a source of survival, which was compromised in the 90s and 2000s, right? People depended too much on advertising. So now content has become very important. So, therefore, people are now going back to uh, selling content. And pricing content, like earlier content was not priced. Newspaper had dropped cover price and they just threw it free and try to increase circulation and sell it to the advertiser saying that we've got 5 million so please give us an advertisement. Now content has become important. Hindu has a paywall, right? <coughs> I'll give you another example, New York Times. New York Times <coughs> decided that, that Facebook and others, social platforms were using their content and making more money than them, right? So, so New York Times said, why should my content be used by uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube and then they are making more money than me? The advertisers are all going to them, no? Because they, are, they, they aggregate number of viewers. So, they, they have large, multiple times readers and viewers than any single newspaper. So, New York Times went behind paywall. They said, okay, we are giving exclusive content but you have to pay, subscribe. So, so they have, I'm told now they have at least five, six million uh, uh, readers <coughs> who are paying for content. So they, they are actually, so that content is behind the paywall. You have to pay. So some of the Indian me media companies are trying to Emulate that example, New York Times. So Hindu has started a paywall, if you notice. You have to pay premium articles. When you go read Hindu on online, they'll say premium article means you have to pay. So, but it is not, India India, India has not matured, this, this model of paying for. So, like we at The Wire, we don't, we are a different model. We don't take advertisements. We don't solicit advertisements. We don't get support from government advertising. We don't get support from big business. We, we, we only get donations from our readers. So we say readers and we are open that you pay for good journalism. So ours is a non-commercial model. So there are many such uh, online uh, outfits like us, uh, news outfits who, who, who take donations. So that is one model. Uh, so donation model de depends on the philanthropy of the, of the, of, of the, of your you know, uh, supporters and uh, and readers. <coughs> so, so, the, so that, there are that's the three layers that I spoke about: <coughs> the, the big social media, the, the national uh, uh, legacy media owners who have lost out in the last five six years on profitable. By the way, Hindu used to a great newspaper used to have a profitability of 200, 300 crores. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, uh, a year. Um, now down to barely 5-10 crores here. So you can check profitability for all the big legacy media, what it used to be 10 years ago and what it is today, say 10-12 years ago. They've all gone down by about at least 90% profitability. Now, because of that, something strange has happened. They all, initially when they were making profits, they all went and listed on the stock market. Ooh. Now that the media, the media business model has got has got uh, weakened, organically got weakened because of all the factors that I spoke about. 
you know, social media coming in and taking away uh, source of uh, thinking about eighty percent of the advertising. Uh, their share values are now gone. They, so it's a bit like what happened with you know public sector banks some time ago when when people public sector banks were, uh, were being treated were being you know uh, badly managed. The share values went down. So 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 many public sector banks became big targets for privatization, right? People obviously the government rules did not allow <coughs> take over political. So banks were lucky <coughs> because banks are governed under the Banking Regulation Act, you know. So uh, and privatization of, and and takeover of a bank by a private guy is not easy because there's RBI strict RBI regulation, the you know in Indian banking uh, regulations. So nothing was the sort in the media. <coughs> People, all the Adanis and Abanis and the Birlas, they moved in and they started buying companies at, at you know, I would say Kabadi price, you know, uh, at, at, you know at, at prices which are 20% of the original share value, you know. So, so that's what is happening. A lot of Indian media is, <coughs> for instance, I'll give you an example. Uh, at one time, Mukesh Ambani had bought a whole, whole range of media companies. It, it, it took over TV18, CNBC from Raga Bell. It took over uh, 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 ETV, you know. There are regional TV, Inadu. Inadu had launched many regional television channels. It took over all the, uh, the uh, Inadu TV channels from, uh, from the original owner, Ramoji Rao. <coughs> they, and all that they, uh, they, they took over some other companies also. Uh, uh, I'm forgetting the uh, other companies that they uh, they took over, and they all that put together would have uh, cost them some, you know, some seven eight hundred crores. You know. So, so imagine uh, for Mukesh money, seven eight hundred crores is like peanuts. It's like chill, children, you know. So similarly for Adani, he's picked up NDTV, <coughs> and Adani is big. But for NDTV, he just had to pay some, uh, you know, uh, seven seven hundred crores. So, so media companies have become very very vulnerable to corporate takeovers. Uh, India Today Group sold its share to Birla. <coughs> Birla has a have, they have a fairly substantial stake in uh, India Today Group. So, India Today, which was originally launched as a standalone, you know, fully owned company by of of Arun Puri. Uh, who basically just owned a printing press when he started. So they are also <coughs> similarly now. Uh, <coughs> Rajiv Chandrasekhar, you know, picked up Asia Net. If you remember, <coughs> a company which was which was promoted by uh, Shashi Kumar. Uh, they, it went to Rajiv Chandrasekhar. He was a businessman. Uh, so, so what is happening is media. <coughs> Because of its weakened business model, it, it, it has become vulnerable to takeovers by 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 big corporates. What what that is doing is it is completely destroying the uh, the the independence of media. Because the moment I mean it's not a question of uh, Ambani's, Birla's, or Adani's. I'm saying that the moment you media becomes uh, gets taken over by uh, by the big big corporates, the question is where is the independence, then what do you report? Because these, these corporates are in everything, no? they, 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 I mean, they, are, they are widely uh, diversified groups and, uh, and, uh, you, and they, they have good relations with the government, so <coughs> you can't even, it's difficult to be critical of the government also beyond a point, because, uh, because the moment you, <coughs> you, you, you you criticize the government. Uh, somebody will make a telephone call to the owner of that company and say, you know, "Do you want that li your li that license to be sort of cancelled? Do <laughs> you want that license to continue?" It's kind of uh, you know. So there is a uh, there's a, that is, in my view, a big crisis in media today. As a result, the space for independent media has really shrunk. And if you ask me today. I mean, I have worked with uh, Times of India Group 20 years ago, 
uh, those days was far more, uh, I would say, uh, more independent than it is today. Now, it's a relative, uh, no, I'm not saying that 20 years ago they were like, you know, they were doing crusading journalism, but they are far more independent than they are today. Especially under this government. And this government has uh, really sort of uh, controlled the media in a, in a very, very... Uh, <coughs> There is multiple ways. I mean, I can't even begin to list the number of ways in which they can truly become the media. So, it's only some maybe half a dozen small online news media people who are still critical of the regime. And uh, for them also, this government has come up with many laws. They have come up with new laws to, to control the media, to take down online news uh, uh, without even consulting the, 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 uh, the publisher, uh, you know, they have they, given themselves powers. They, uh, for instance, uh, in the middle of COVID 2021, they, they amended the IT Act, uh, Information Technology Act, uh, and gave themselves power, this government, uh, gave uh, special emergency powers, it's called emergency powers, to to Secretary Information Broadcasting Ministry to, to, to basically to take down any online news content uh, at his discretion uh, without informing the public. <laughs> this, this is a clear violation of Article 19 of the Constitution, right? Article 19 very clearly says that what is to be published and what is not to be published, the judgment of, of a story cannot be done by the government. It can only be adjudicated by a court of law. Because Article 19 can only be adjudicated by a Supreme Court. And in Article 19, there is only one, there is exception 19.2, uh, there is 19.1a, 19.2, and 19.2 talks about reasonable restrictions. Now, reasonable restrictions on publishing can only be decided by the Supreme Court. But today what we, what we see is the government is deciding reasonable restrictions. We decide that this is not to be published. So, so, so this government has been doing it. Uh, by the way, this this part of uh, uh, this this aspect uh, of uh, this of the IT amendment, uh, which, which is seeking to control online news media. <laughs> Uh, has been stayed by the Madras High Court, has been stayed by the Bombay High Court, stayed by several High Courts on the same ground that, that Article 19 does not permit uh, right to freedom of speech which is available to the media, uh, cannot be uh, unilaterally be, you know, uh, taken away by the executive, which is the government. So, so the case is still on. The Supreme Court has bunched up all the cases uh, to hear uh, them as a as a uh, as one you know uh, whole so so that is the situation of uh, the, the the curves on small online media as i said the bigger media is <coughs> compromised in many other ways right so uh, the business models are not working uh, standalone so that's the situation we are in so it, it's a really state of flux uh, we we uh, we don't know where this is headed. So, uh, and as far as the big, uh, I said the big social media platforms are concerned, they they have a certain, uh, they are in an oligopoly situation. They they control the the market for advertising. Uh, they also, in some ways, they control the dissemination of content also because they are the big distributors for us also. So if they if they collaborate with the government, sometimes it happens. So they have to do other businesses here, no? So, uh, for instance, the Elon Musk of Twitter, he is launching uh, his EV uh, vehicles in India. So, for that, he requires many, uh, you know, permissions of the government. So, government can uh, uh, easily uh, arm twist him and say that if you want to do your EV business here, you'll have to listen to us on uh, on the on the freedoms to be provided on Twitter, on what sort of content Twitter should, you know. So all these are challenges. So I'm just laying down the challenges. So that is the that is the overall uh, media scenario that uh, that we are facing uh, today. Thank you. Now I'm. Uh, I'm
I, I thought I told Anil that we much better that we have an interactive. Uh, uh, if you have any <coughs> questions or if you want uh, to, uh, we have to say something, you know, but whatever I have uh, just laid down on the state of the media, uh, I'm happy to answer this. Thank you. Before starting this session itself, uh, so that was telling that he was more interested in this interactive session. So I request our comrades can either give it in writing or we can use this mic also. I think the mic is better. That's better. Okay. That will be better for you. Thank you. Yeah, I can. Uh, three of us, uh, Siddharth Pantarajan, me and uh, third partner Siddharth Bhatia and Siddharth Bhatia. We saw the wire as an opportunity to, to give uh, the readers what other newspapers are not giving. Uh, so basically we, we went into that, that space breach. Uh, we occupied that... Uh, so we, we have spent the last eight, nine years at frankly uh, fact checking this government. This government has a, uh, is a, it's such a sitting duck. <laughs> on facts. I mean, every day you you actually spend uh, fact checking this government. You know? So on everything, on policy, on claims, on you know, uh, whether it is uh, claims during COVID or whether it's claims, uh, you know, uh, around uh, uh, around the economic policies, uh, on on, uh, on on growth, on employment, on in, on everything. So we uh, we actually <coughs> are uh, we have positioned ourselves as critical media. We we are we constantly question the establishment, which of course uh, the government doesn't like, and they they have in various ways they have tried to sort of harass us, uh, uh, and uh, I mean it's all there in the public domain. Uh, so uh, so we, uh, we but we have kind of. Uh, we completed now nine years, and we we, we have built a national brand, uh, and especially in the south, we we have a lot of uh, uh, support, uh, reader support from the south, uh, and uh, and we uh, and wire has been kind of uh, uh, has been seen as uh, as an important uh, voice, uh, a dissenting voice uh, within within the within the media space. <coughs> And as I said, we are a, I mean, we are a, uh, we are a non-profit media. Uh, we are a Section 8 company, and we we got our first uh, funding uh, donation from uh, from a trust which was created by Azim Premji, uh, which, which is called Independent Public Spirited Media Foundation. And this foundation gave uh, us money, and then given many other media, online media news channels also money. Uh, to, to run independent media, who are not dependent on corporate advertising or government advertising. So, so we are, I can proudly say that we are free of government and corporate pressure. So, so a lot of times uh, when uh, things, when you see that the mainstream media is not reporting something, you can find it in the wire. So, uh, so and of course, we, it's, not, it's not easy because there's a lot of pressure uh, from corporates, from governments, so there is a, uh, but we have, so far we managed, no? uh, so we managed to survive, yeah, I would say. Uh, just you are mentioning that media is in great crisis now. Yeah. As the, some big personalities are ready to buy those media houses now. Why it was not the case before? If big media houses ready to sell themselves for the sake of money now, yeah. they could have done it before also. But before they were making money, no? <laughs> now they, now what is happening is they, they own, that, that's the point I was making. Suppose you are running a company, you are a family unit, and there are say, say 10 family members. Right. So, 20 years ago, you had, you had good profitability. Uh, this is a pre pre social media era. I'm saying pre Facebook, pre uh, YouTube, Twitter, and you uh, you you had uh, they were all they making healthy profits. Now when your profits go down to zero and they start if you start losing money, then what do you do? 
uh, one way out is to to sell 20 percent share to like one group did. India today initially sold 25 percent to Kumar Mangalam Birla. So by selling shares you recover money, right? So so like that there has been a creeping acquisition. So first they buy 25 percent, then buy another 10 percent. So and the and big business has for them as I said this is a small change, right? So so media. So, so that is what has happened. Earlier there were, I'm telling you about 25, 30 years ago, the, the Ambani's couldn't have touched uh, any of the existing, uh, nobody would have, uh, you know, sold their company to the Ambani's. But uh, what, what we have seen in the last 15, 20 years is that, uh, that they, they, everybody is willing to sell, you know. So, of course, uh, NDTV Corona was to some extent forced to sell, uh, uh, but but he also hello yeah Roy Roy uh, he's a big name he built a very good TV channel now why why did he have to sell he had to he had to sell because he he had a loan from the Abani's uh, from Mukesh Abani four hundred fifty odd crores the loan carried on for ten years. And that loan was, was uh, as per the agreement, was to be converted to equity. So, in those 10 years, the entity's value fell so much that he, Abani, became a, a, a controlling uh, stakeholder. And so, entity became totally vulnerable to the Abani's. And Abani quietly sold that stake to Adani, you know, finished. And, and uh, th there was speculation that it was. Uh, it was this uh, government which forced or which persuaded the money to sell the state to Adani. That is a that is a that is a highly uh, uh, speculated uh, you know <laughs> uh, much talked about uh, background uh, you know what happened in the background. Sir, you have just told that. Uh, you have just told that uh, the material of uh, these uh, media groups are reused or uh, like Facebook has reused yeah. or yeah, yeah. of New York Times and this and that. Okay. In India, there is uh, copyright protection and uh, whether there is any other way or any other law that is protecting the rights of media. And this first question, second question is, you have told that uh, media do face many pressures. So I want to know what are the source of uh, pressures, whether you receive the call threats or uh, some people approach you and threaten or uh, from your Facebook people or uh, the enforcing agencies, officers start uh, seeing your Facebook and you get to know, get alert that uh, what's happening. Yeah, yeah. These I mean, are the two questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, the first question is a good one. I'll, I'll come to the second one. See, you, there is no copyright issue. As I said, because because Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, they have become massive distribution platforms. To all the media companies are compelled to share their content on on on, on Facebook to get to as many. Uh, readers as possible or viewers as possible to, to get their share of advertising. So 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 it has become compulsory to uh, to be on uh, Facebook, to be on WhatsApp, be on. So therefore, you have uh, Times of India's Facebook account. You have so and so. So so they they, they volunteer. All the media groups are voluntarily putting their content to 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 get. More revenues coming from uh, from Facebook or uh, or YouTube because all the advertisers are going to Facebook and you know they become the aggregators of content, right? So aggreg as aggregators of content, they have far far bigger. Uh, as I said, uh, you know, in India itself, Facebook has probably has four or five hundred million uh, uh, as uh, uh, users. So so which media company will have five hundred million uh, you know users? They all are small, uh, I mean even the, the big ones uh, have probably <coughs> 2 million, 3 million. <coughs> so, so dynamics have changed. So what New York Times did was, 
it continues to share its content on Facebook, but it, it has created a special set of uh, exclusive content, which it says will be behind paywall, paid content. To see this, you'll have to pay me. This won't be available on Facebook. All other routine content is there on Facebook. New York Times Facebook account, right? So it, it works like that. And uh, uh, to your second question, there are various ways in which they, 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 they issue threats. One is government will withdraw advertising. When Hindu, uh, when Enram broke the Rafal scam in Hindu, uh, the Hindu was uh, uh, immediately after that, the, all the government advertising was withdrawn from Hindu. And uh, it is open, it's open secret. They even talked about it. Then they were also, <coughs> they were also coercion of Hindu, saying that uh, Enram had got documents which were classified. So, so there was some threat that official secret act will be put on Hindu. Uh, so, it was merely delivered as a threat, but they didn't follow up. So, these kind of uh, uh, threats, uh, they, this government can even call advertisers, big advertisers, not to uh, support some groups. It has been happening. So, uh, like before, uh, uh, I mean, before the uh, takeover of NDTV, uh, I mean, you all know what NDTV has gone through. They, they, they threw income tax on them, they threw enforcement directorate on them, they threw CBI on them. And uh, none of those cases are proven. In fact, many of the some income tax cases, NDTV has already won. Uh, this was when Pranay Rao was still the owner. Now, of course, Adani has taken over. So, uh, but doesn't know where those cases are now. So, uh, so, so they, uh, in the, in the past, uh, like in the wire itself, uh, for normal coverage, you know, uh, cases are launched against us. Uh, the UP government has, had, uh, if you remember when the farmers uh, movement was happening, uh, the UP government launched <coughs> sedition cases against, uh, for, for, against Rajdeep Sandesai, a few others, editors who, who had tweeted uh, something about some violence that had happened. And uh, all those editors had to go to the Supreme Court. Uh, to get a stay on the uh, on the on a possible arrest, so uh, the cases are still being heard. So, uh, so it's very common journalists being pers being you know cases being filed against journalists. You know, uh, criminal defamation is another tool. The wire has faced many criminal defamation. You know? So <clears throat> sometimes you know they, it comes from a company, but actually the uh, what we hear is that the, the companies do it under uh, under pressure from the government. You know? So it's a kind of proxy, uh, you know. Uh, uh, so these things happen. So we, we, we fought at least half a dozen defamation cases, you know. So <coughs> from big from corporates, coming from corporates. <coughs> so it's become a tool. You, you, you write something, uh, uh, and if you, even if you're mildly critical, or if you question the, uh, uh, if you question a deal, for instance, why I had questioned the Rafal deal, you know. We had questioned why should, why should Rafal, uh, you know, why should one company, uh, which was unknown, and no experience of defense, be, take, be taken on as an offset partner by the government? Then the, that company filed a suit in Ahmedabad court against him. So, uh, civil defamation in case. 5,000 crore. So, <laughs> so, I tell people that uh, wires, valuation is 5,000 crore. Although we are a non-profit company. Life <laughs> No, no life sets over. For, fortunately. <laughs> yeah, BBC. You know, imagine BBC. Nobody would imagine that BBC would be raided like that. And they, they raided them, took away the phones. They raided all of them, took away our phones uh, once. Laptops, office computer. We went to the court and we fought. We got it back. The court ruled in our favor, and on the court also said that media cannot be harassed like this. Media plays an important role in democracy. BBC. Nobody thought that BBC would be, uh, you know, raided the way. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, 
uh, DBC is also fighting the case, uh, and uh, uh, they have not found any. Initially, they were looking for some tax uh, 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 violation, uh, transfer pricing violation. I don't know. They have not found anything so far. So, so what they did was they uh, again during COVID, they DBC ha has a uh, as a company uh, as an online uh, uh, India based company in which they have hundred percent investment of online dues. So during COVID, they came up with this change in FDI policy for online news, which was that uh, foreign investment is restricted to 26%. So the remaining has to be domestic. So BBC has, is now forced to find a domestic partner and sell their <laughs> remaining stake, keep only 26% and sell remaining uh, you know, 74 to some, uh, uh, some domestic guy. They have not been able to find the domestic partner, so they fi find the case against them. So, I think they are in the process of finding some, you know, some solution to that. So, like this is a this is a case of regulatory harassment. Suppose you you got you got hundred crores from a foreign investor to another company, and you are suddenly overnight you are told that uh, uh, that the foreign investor will only have twenty six percent, remaining seventy five percent has to be divested. So the foreign investment is supposed to, investor is supposed to sell that to a domestic investor. Now when, when you go in the domestic market, you go to some, uh, everybody is scared, you know, the, as it is, the, there is a scare of the government. Uh, and sometimes, B, suppose BBC is, I can guarantee you that if BBC had gone to, even say somebody like Mukesh Mani and said, would you want to buy 76? You would have said no, <laughs> the government is after you, you know. So, so, do you see my point? So, if when, when there is so much fear, uh, uh, even the uh, even these things uh, become difficult. You know, these, these regulatory uh, traps that they lay, difficult to come out of. Yeah. So, uh, the media which are creating some uh, uh, some problems to the uh, government. Such as wire and now the news click that uh, Prabhu Purga has caused uh, yeah. the arrest yeah. and yeah. news, yeah. news click, yeah. Uh, so, uh, is there any uh, that uh, uh, like minded uh, uh, that news channels? Is there any yeah. that uh, from uh, association or like that or uh, that combined resistance from these parts? So, so we, you're right. So we have we have a formed an association called DigiPop. Digital uh, Publications Association. Now, this DigiPub has a lot of these the new small uh, online news media as members uh, like Scroll, uh, NewsClick was also you know uh, part of the DigiPub. Uh, uh, from the South News Minute, uh, you must have heard of uh, Vinaya Rajendra runs a news minute for. Uh, then we have Quint. Uh, Quint.com. We have uh, uh, we have many uh, we have a large number of uh, digital publications. They they, and they are critical of the government, and the, the government realizes that 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 the the, the big media they, they are able to control because the big media has there are various levers you know because they have a his, historical baggage, but, but our small media like ours we have no historical baggage we we have no assets we have no Nothing to uh, to sort of lose, so 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 they, they have found other ways of controlling us. I, as I said, they have changed. Only to the huh? Only to the yeah yeah yeah. I mean, like NewsClick is shocking. NewsClick is shocking because they have put UAP uh, on on the on editor of NewsClick. Right? From which angle they, there is no the FIR does not state explain what what terror activity has has been. You know. So. I mean, uh, there are a lot of uh, irrational, uh, I would say, draconian and irrational measures uh, being taken by this government to control the media. Sir, uh, in Kerala, all the uh, media except Kairali, I think, have a hidden agenda against uh, uh, Kerala government, uh, particularly against Pinarai, uh, Vijay, Chief Minister of Kerala. Uh, Minister Anurag Thakur 
came there and uh, had a meeting with all other uh, media people there. Uh, to, uh, for fear, uh, due to fear, uh, I, I think uh, all media uh, person are against uh, LDF government in Kerala. So, since you know, you're right. Uh, every every state government, every establishment, uh, media is uh, media is supposed to uh, to to objectively report and to even criticize any establishment. Mr. Uh, Vijayan also must be making mistakes, so media will write about it. So it's true, Mr. Vijayan may not like uh, you know those, those media. Uh, except Kerala is a party uh, organ, right? So, so, so the, so I would say that's healthy. At least Pindra Vijay is not putting people in jail, no. <laughs> he, I mean, I'm comparing <laughs> what is happening here. Uh, you know, people being Pindra Vijay is not uh, putting cases of sedition against uh, editors, right? It uh, that that tension between the the between any government, which is CM and the media, it is normal. Which has always existed. So some tension should always be there between government and media. I mean, they can't be sitting in uh, in the same uh, kind of club and uh, and uh, and be friends. Uh, media and government are not supposed to be, be friends. They they're supposed to be. When we enter journalism, we are told that you you have to play an adversarial role because your commitment is to the reader. You have to tell the reader what's going on, right? You have to speak, as they say, speak truths to power. So if Pedro Vijay is power there, so you have to speak truth to him. Mr. Modi is in power, you have to speak truth to Modi. Or the Kerala media is speaking truth to both. They are speaking truth to Modi and to Pedro Vijay both. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I don't find any, uh, uh, anything wrong with that. You know? As the technology is improving very much nowadays, whether this much of money is needed for functioning of a media? Good question, because technology has uh, become the, uh, now this is what I always tell people that that because technology has uh, improved so much and things have become so fast and you have free distribution. Today, uh, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube are giving you a free distribution platform. The cost of running media has come down a lot. That's why legacy media which ran on high cost, they are struggling because they already hired people. So, so if you start media today, you don't have to spend, and if you, especially if you start internet based online media, the, there is the entry barrier is almost nothing. You can, we started the wire with, we, all three of us put one and a half lakh rupees each. We started with roughly six lakh rupees. So, five, 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 five and a half. So, uh, then we got the first funding. So, if you want to start a media, for instance, I, I think you, uh, your bank federation can start an online media for, for the bank employees. And you can post every day news about what's going on, you know. You know, uh, uh, of course, you'll, you can't, Beyond a point, criticize your management. <laughs> They'll get after you. <laughs> but but then you can create a media meant for bankers, and you know, uh, which, which can which can report professional issues. We can also report social issues. You know? So I'm just saying that anybody can start. Uh, media is not a high cost affair, <coughs> and in a way, it's good because you we are we are now going back to what happened in the 1950s. Then media, come, uh, media, you know, post independence, uh, you know, media which came out, whose ideas of nation building were run very simply. They were not running after profit. So we have to now go back to that model where you don't go after profits. You barely <coughs> give the best to the reader and you cover your salary costs, you cover your basic costs. And you may possibly just go for a small uh, surplus uh, to in order to to expand, in order to plow back into the you know. Uh, it is not a <coughs> place where you you should aim for profits, or it's not a place where you can make big profits. That's my view. Yeah, there's a question here. What what are 
actions we should take to save media from corporates. So, uh, and present scenario, uh, yeah. present scenario is not possible because in other countries there are regulations which which prevent corporates from taking over media. It's called cross media ownership. For instance, in Britain, uh, an Ambani cannot buy one television channel, one newspaper, one radio, and one he can't. Because it is cross media. That means you are you are capturing where every different sections and platforms. So they don't allow cross media ownership. In India, everything is allowed. In India, it's a this government is like uh, you know uh, for big business, everything is allowed. You know. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering how our bank, how our bank survived so far. You know? So, <laughs> they, you know, they, I, I don't know when they will open licensing. Everybody is wanting more and more licenses, right? Uh, so, <coughs> so uh, it's just Paytm is now being bought over by I read Mukesh uh, Ambani. You'll see it, uh, once he takes over, they, they'll get a deposit license. So, they'll start taking deposits. In fact. Just as I was saying that traditional media, newspaper, uh, uh, technology has changed the entire uh, business model. The same holds true for banking. The technology is going to completely transform the banking industry. You don't know uh, after 10 years whether branches will be relevant, you know. Uh, of course, in the rural areas they are, you have to go. You know, there are still people who want to go and see a branch, you know. I don't know how many of us see branches. And we you know, basically do all our transactions on, on the mobile. Technology that way cuts both ways. It, uh, you, you ask, no, technology can help you. Technology can make you, make it easy for you to, but it can also disrupt. And that disruption, uh, in that disruption there will be many winners and losers. Uh, but you can't predict who will be the loser and who the winner. Like I personally feel that State Bank of India has done very well to compete with the private sector and and keep its edge even on technology. So state bank has the largest number of branches, it is also uh, you know uh, really competing well with the private sector, HDFCs and others. Uh, so I mean, that's a good sign actually, you know, a public sector bank you know, doing so well. <coughs> but state bank of India, don't forget, is also doing deals with Mukesh Ambani. You know? Both Ambani and Adani. Both Ambani and Adani. Yeah, you know, on various things where it need not need to have a partner. Why should State Bank need a partner? It has everything going for it, no? But there are also some government pressure here, there. Especially on internet mobile banking, they will, they are doing some collaboration. I don't know what. What is the implication of it? I mean, you people are the best place to <laughs> determine that. You know. So, even after this table, these digitalizations, we are facing too much rushing. <laughs> 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 That's because, you know, the, the people, you know, psychologically, uh, this is my belief. Branches will never go away. Because I know people <clears throat> who have. Big deposit of 10 lakhs, they want to go and see the branch to ensure that he gets there, no? The branch is there, my money is there. You know, if you don't see a, if you, don't, if you have 50 deposit of 10 lakhs and if you don't see a branch for 2-3 years, you start getting worried, you know? <laughs> So there is that physical, physical aspect is very much there. So. Uh, sir. How fearful is deep fake? Deep fake? Yeah. You know, deep fake is a, there is a risk. As I said, the, the, the internet provides you great opportunities, technology. But technology also creates, uh, uh, as, you know, they can create deep fakes, which are, uh, uh, it's, it's almost like, uh, you know, police and thief. They are both uh, trying to get ahead of each other, you know. <laughs> so, so, the, the internet space also requires a lot of ca careful regulation. Careful, not... What happens is whenever the defect comes, <laughs> the 
government will say, oh, now we want to shut down everything. You know? So instead of shutting down deep fake, they will shut down you know, media <laughs> news. You know? <laughs> shut down wire. You know? <laughs> so it's like throwing the baby with the bath water. You know? You're right, deep fake is a risk, but, but it has to be dealt with very delicate, very, uh, in a way that does not take away the positives of the uh, of, of the of the uh, of the use of internet and technology i mean we, we are in uncharted territory as i said we don't know who will be the winners who will be the losers you know? <coughs> sir uh, regarding the harassment of editors uh, of the newspapers or like the ebw editor what sir Parun Jai Guha Atagutta, he was also forced to resign because he has written an article on Adani. Yeah. And later the scroll, I think Ramana Reddy also was a bit there from yeah. uh, and it is not a later also I think also. So a lot of cases are punished against those haters also. Yeah. And all the cases are filed only in Abad Abad Aikur, yeah. not anywhere else. No, I, I, I tell you the reason, most of our cases are also filed in Abad Abad whether it was Anil Ambani or you know, even some some were filed by Adani, some were filed by, you know, the... the uh, Amdabal is the only court where if you file a, uh, of a, if you file a, normally if you file a, say, 1000 crore defamation case, civil defamation, you, in other courts, you have to deposit a percentage of that as, as yes. deposit money to show your seriousness, that you, it's a, so, 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 some 1% or 2%, so, some of this 1%. So, if you file a, a thousand, uh, 2,000 crore, uh, say, 1,000 crore case, or a 5,000 crore case as, as a money, as a money taken against us, you have to give 1%, right? So, 1% uh, is, uh, yeah, 50 crores. So, you have to put up 50 crores. You have to block 50 crores, right? But in Ahmedabad, <coughs> in Ahmedabad, you can put 75 lakh rupees and file a 10,000 crore case. So, so I mean, Gujarat has provided a lot of such uh, uh, easy ways for uh, for the operation class. You know? <laughs> this much uh, kind of harassment is uh, unleashed on uh, media, which is one of the important uh, important for the ordinary public to get news. So there are a lot of news that are manufactured. Pro comment, pro Modi, everywhere yeah. Modi, Modi. So, how to find the real news? Why in uh, they are calling, why in this calling and all? The virus has now come out with India cable also, no? like the news, news channel also they have come. So, how to find out the real good news? And uh, a lot of trolling is also there. And some good news is coming. This uh, I mean, I mean, BJP media says they are putting a lot of cases, yeah. they are pouring in a lot of uh, anger. So, how to combat this? Uh, from the to get good news and to support the good news, yeah. And uh, how to take up this media against this uh, government regime? To I mean, uh, what all the mistakes they are doing, what all the atrocities they are doing? How to combat against this uh, uh, regime? No, it's a it's a big challenge because today everybody every individual is empowered <coughs> with a mobile. In fact, the government has has cultivates a lot of these in uh, rural UP and other places, uh, uh, especially where they are very strong, the BJP, they cultivate a lot of individuals who, uh, who just go and take uh, bites, you know, take, shoot something, you know, and uh, it can be a kind of, you know, uh, put up a story also, and they circulate it on, you know. Uh, <coughs> so, so, so the only one way of dealing with this is, uh, as Arun Shari once said, you know, that media organization alone cannot do this task. Speaking truth to power, you know, or speaking truth generally, or spreading the right kind of information. So he says that this has to be done by everybody. So it is not enough to speak. Arun Shari has this famous line, even Arundhati Roy said this somewhere, that it's not enough to speak truth to the power. Because the powers know what the truth is. What, what, <laughs> it's important to speak truth to each other, though, so that everybody is well informed. So that's uh, so everybody is empowered with their with WhatsApp. They, the, the establishment will put up some ten thousand WhatsApp groups to spread, uh, you know, 
According to your opinion, the media, uh, this is a question, Ca uh, media uh, uh, has been captured by uh, by corporates because of social media, uh, but, but in the present scenario, social media is the only way to expose uh, the truth uh, to public, which is true. I, I, I didn't say, uh, let, let me clarify here. Social media is to be used by everybody. It's, I, I, as I said, it cuts both ways. Social media, uh, the, those who want to, to spread deep fakes will also use social media. Those who want to spread factual news will also use social media. Say. Like we use social media for why are the only platform to, 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 to disseminate uh, our view, our analysis is social media. So social media is, uh, is, is very vital. What I am saying is that, that <coughs> I don't, the first sentence, the first part of the question is, uh, uh, I don't think I said that, I don't mean, uh, if, I, if, you, if you got this impression, I'll, I want to correct it. I'm not saying media is captured by corporates because of social media. I'm, I'm saying that if Ambani is capturing the media, it is not because of social media. Ambani is also, uh, it's because of the media, val the value of media companies become so low that then it's, it's very easy for them to put 700 crores and pick up, uh, you know, four or five channels, uh, you know, uh, uh, around, around the country and, and, and get that influence, you know. So, imagine, Amani's turnover is one lakh, whatever, you know, uh, 20,000 crore revenues of their watch, more than that. For him, 700 crore is small change. And imagine the, the disproportionate influence that he wields after getting the media. So, so, so that is the corporate capture I'm saying. So, the big social media is 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 a is a different issue. Uh, in fact, Abani also depends on the big social media to to to, to disseminate his uh, you know uh, I mean his his product, his news, his analysis. Like CNBC, uh, you see any of those channels, you know, moneycontrol.com, they all belong to the Abani. Firstpost.com belongs to Abani. Yeah. They, are, they are also using the social, social media to, to disseminate the news and analysis. So social media is a, is a by and large a neutral platform. Of course, sometimes the, it comes under pressure from governments. And sometimes they do compromises with the government also. But, uh, but by and large social media is, is, is what inevitably is, is what we all use to, to Spread either facts or to spread lies. You know. <laughs> so, so it, it it is it is neutral. It's like it can be used for whatever you want. You know. <coughs> Sir, this uh, as you told uh, from the previous reply and with this question, this uh, corporates uh, buying this uh, companies news channels companies and all. It is not only because it is of uh, very low price. Uh, only in the past few they years. Uh, they want the price. And only in the past few years it is happening. Maybe one day after this uh, BJP government is happening. <coughs> and uh, they may expect, I think, their, their <laughs> friendly Prime Minister, uh, they may want to help him also to propagate the <laughs> government, uh, government ideas and government views. Uh, yes. Why do you think Amani sold uh, any TV to uh, Adani? Because I, you're just helping the regime, I don't know. Adani is helping the regime. Just imagine, I mean, just think for yourself. Why would Ambani sell a, such a large media platform to his biggest rival? <laughs> Why would you do that? Will you sell a, 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 a media platform to your, to your enemy? You won't. That means something has happened, no? Yeah. Uh, sir, what are the amendments took place in ITA? Hello? Yes. Yeah. Sir, what are the amendments took place in ITA which empowered government? for putting restrictions on uh, media. So there was one amendment in the IT Act, uh, which came in 2021, uh, which uh, it, it was it was called, you know, ethical, uh, 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 
it was termed uh, uh, media. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a regulation which was brought in the name of uh, media ethics, under which the government has created a, a committee of joint secretaries of various ministries, home ministry, one defence one, <coughs> and they will they will empower to decide whether an anal analysis. Uh, is is correct or not? I mean, this has never happened before. No? How can government decide <laughs> whether, whether some news is correct or not, or analysis? Suppose I I write a story. I, I write on economics. I mostly write on economics. I, if I if I write an analysis saying that the government's economic policies have failed and the government has not been able to generate the employment that Mr. Modi promised. In 2014, when he came to what, 2 crores a year, not happened. And I proved through data. Government is saying, no, no, we have generated enough employment. It is adding all the, the some 50,000 loans that it has given Mudra loan all to employment. So if some existing guy has take, got a Mudra loan, he is already uh, running his small business. No, how is it new employment, right? No, they are assuming that no, no, he will hire somebody, so it's employment. So, anyway, so what I am saying is that, so government has the right to take that article down. This committee of joint secretary has been empowered to take the article down, which is why the high courts have have struck down that uh, that part of the amendment. It's being heard. It is still uh, under. and and more recently, uh, about six six seven months ago, another amendment was done uh, in the same IT Act. Uh, uh, which happened under this, this minister, what's his name? Chandrasekhar, right? Mm. Uh, the Press Information Bureau is, is hereby empowered to recommend taking down of any government related news uh, at its discretion. Now, Press Information Bureau is, is a PR agency of the government. They will, what they give you is what, is what uh, they basically market government's uh, achievements. You may not agree with those, no? And so the, the PR agency <laughs> is being empowered to to say that no, this article is not correct. Recommend that should be taken down. This amendment also happened. This is also being challenged in the court. The FBI is titled to 100% new no, no. Uh, see, FDI media is restricted twenty six percent. What what had happened was traditionally in newspapers and in television it's twenty six percent. But in on online news it began with hundred percent because when it it was not seen as uh, you know it's, it's not seen as traditional <laughs> media. So. So in 2021, this government said we are aligning online news FDI policy to the other media, so we reduced it to 20 which which became a big problem for those who had got 100% because then they had to find some buyer for the 74%. No, you have to, you have to sell. And then who do you find a buyer? BBC is not going to find a buyer. Right? So that is the problem. Okay. Uh, so you may make a policy and then you change it. Uh, Creating a, a problem, you know, complex problem. Sir, as you have investigated Harshad Mehta case, uh, put some light on unknown threats which have not been shown in uh, Scam 1992 movie. Harshad Mehta, everything came out, right? He was arrested. Uh, uh, what unknown facts? I mean, uh, there, two films have also come on uh, uh, So, uh, I think most of the facts came out uh, in Arshad The only fact that did not come out was whether the, all the facts came out about Harshad Mehta's dealing with banks. All those things came out. Uh, there was a big JPC inquiry, if you remember. The only facts that, that still a big black hole today is that who are the politicians he was paying, you know. <laughs> that is not the problem. So, like, you know, 
India had a, again, 30 years ago we had a, a reasonably strong, uh, uh, you know, Delhi Union of Journalists, you know, National Union, uh, two, three uh, uh, groups. Uh, but they have become very weak over the years because uh, the journalists themselves, uh, they compromise by going on, you know, earlier we were, media people were governed by uh, Bachavad Award, you know, the, the government used to set up a commission and they would, uh, every uh, every 10 years they would set up a, uh, like the pay commission, uh, there would be a independent judge who would, uh, you know, some retired judge would give a pay increase. So all that is gone. So, and in the last 15, 20 years, they, uh, people have started going on contracts. The contract system is now almost pervasive in media. Generally. Nobody's job is safe. So, so that because they, because people have signed contracts, the trade unions have become weak. So what do you fight then? Although, although even under contracts, there, there are uh, you can't sort of so easily sack people. Um, but journalists have now. Uh, Become big, big, by using social media, as somebody said, well, social media is actually a great tool, even for individual journalists. They be, they become uh, entrepreneurs. They after gaining experience, they use uh, YouTube uh, to to actually to disseminate news. And some of them are a big brand name today. For instance, Ravish Kumar of NDTV. You know, Ravish Kumar is a big big brand name. He left NDTV when Adani took over NDTV. Ravish Kumar left. And he has, he, uh, I, I don't know how many of you have heard of Ravish Kumar, you must have seen, right? Yes. Almost all time. Huh? Yes. Yeah. So he he has started a YouTube channel called Ravish Kumar Official. And uh, it has, within six months it got 8.5 million subscribers. Believe it, believe it or not, within six months. Organizations, bigger organizations take five five years to get 8.5 million. He got, and he's, He's shown that an individual journalist can develop a good business model. Like he's uh, he's getting good uh, good revenues also. Yeah. I'm told more than what he was earning in uh, NDTV. So in a way, uh, Ravish uh, should actually uh, see Adani's takeover of NDTV as a blessing in disguise. <laughs> 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 He, he himself says actually. <laughs> so, comrades, anyhow, I think this session was very active. Uh, one, one thing is that you have noticed regarding that FDA. See, our Jerin is here. He's working in CSP Bank. Said by private sector bank, CSP Bank. Yeah, yeah. Now we think the foreign direct investment in that bank it is around 51%. I think they have now around up to 74, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, they are trying for it. Yeah, yeah. But here at BBC, they are trying to get 74% domestic investors. Yeah, yeah. They are trying for that. Yeah, exactly. You should ask for BBC bond. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we can demand for BBC bond in CSP bank. That's what I, I was also thinking about that. Anyhow, the session was, it was very interesting. And it was very active also. I want to say, I think one last thing I want to say. The, you know, media does not, uh, we have done a lot of reports, some other, some other media, but media, you should actively push uh, stories uh, in media for uh, uh, when, when big industries, uh, when they default, uh, the, and, and, and then many of them have gone to bankruptcy court. And the, the bank recovery is less than 1%, you know. You know recently, one 45,000 crore bank default, you know, Anil Ambani group. Yes. Recovery is less than 1%? Yes. So, you should raise this question, what, what has he done with uh, with 44,000 crore? Where are the assets? What has he created with 44,000 crore? No? There is no recovery. Average recovery is only 4, 5, 6, 7%. You know, this is a scam, you know, this... Uh, <coughs> yeah. Well, that Anil Ambani's case, that Rafael, that uh, you, you are telling about that in the wire, yeah. you know, Anil Ambani has filed a case against the wire. Yeah. And Rafael, it is also for Anil Ambani only. Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah now, no, no, he, that, yeah, he, yeah, now he, that's yeah, how. 
his his company yeah. uh, that is also defaulted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, some it was a naval uh, company, you know. Uh, no, it was a Reliance uh, Communication Infrastructure. That company now it is uh, under IBC. His brother, yeah. Mukesh Ambani, has purchased the share. Yeah. Yeah, four, four, yeah. Four, four, four hundred fifty crores. Four hundred fifty crores. Yeah. Yeah. That is less than one percent. Yeah. This is this is less than NDTV. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't think so. we have to. Anyhow, uh, I think our next next section it is only at uh, five thirty PM. Anyhow, I want. Uh, as uh, we are concluding this session, near this session, sir, it was very interesting for us and it will be very useful for us for in our future programs and our activities also. On behalf of Bank Employees Profession of India, we must have given us okay before starting this program, but uh, we couldn't do that. That is that is my fault itself. Now, now I request our uh, secretary, Comrade Manodi. Kindly handle our bouquet. I said, I know that this bouquet will not be a mark of respect to you. Thank you. I need your support for the wire. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Our our our. Gratitude to you. Now I think this session is over. I am declaring this session as over.